thanks for being uh, coming to this aula. So, uh, the idea I was asked by Stefan to uh, kind of give a course on mathematics and music theory, maths and music. So, address uh, to mathematicians, computer scientists, psychologists, proposers, and curious philosophers. Maybe. And uh, so, I I try not to be too technical because uh, I don't see really pure mathematicians in the audience. And maybe it's better really to give general ideas. And uh, I think there are kind of a lot of points which resonate very well with the discussion we had: the music analysis, the time, uh, how the time is involved in the in the analytical process, in the perception. process I have something to say maybe on the way in which mathematics can help. Uh, okay, stop, stop. So and the idea is also to show you some computational tools that we are developing in open music. So you are a bit, a bit familiar with open music now with Thanks to Jean Bresson Aula, but I will come back to some basic principles. It's always good to, uh, to say things again, uh, twice or two times. Also, because I focus on one particular project in open music, which is called the uh, Maps Tools environment. It's a kind of a special environment uh, in which we try to include uh, our results in mathematical formalization and musical processes and musical structures and to give tools to composers who want to explore new compositional uh, landscapes starting with really uh, pure mathematics if you will. so it's a is a project which is done in collaboration with uh, at the beginning with Carlos Sagon uh, he started in 2003 during my PhD, 2000, 2000, 2003, and we collected some libraries, specialized library in open music. And then the, the, the project became something autonomous and uh, is so integrated in the can of open music. So if you, if you download open music, you have automatically math tools environment with all the tutorials. <coughs> and I will show you how to use a little bit these, these tools. So with Carlos at the beginning, Jean Bresson, who is uh, doing the, the main development of the music, but also mathematicians like Emmanuel Amin in France, Thomas Noll in Berlin, many people from the math music community that, uh, and who are interested in computational models. Uh, so open music, uh, as Jean presented, uh, here, if you can download uh, the problem, there are two books that I highly recommend because it's a collection of compositional uses of music. So, composers uh, who describe their use, the way in which uh, open music has been used, really to create works which has been performed. So this was the hypothesis of the, the books. The, the pieces have to be performed, so there has to be a kind of recording so that we can listen to the piece and uh, and we can access eventually to patches uh, ask the composer uh, to access to have access to the patches which were the basis of the compositional process. So two volumes I did by Carlos Gerard and Jean Bresson, in which you can also find a lot of composers using not tools environment. We didn't know that there were people uh, interested, but uh, actually it's, it's a kind of hidden. I mean, the, there are pieces which use locally some features, some uh, tools, some mathematical results, and uh, so those are surprised to, to see that uh, there are many composers actually uh, making use of this uh, environment. So Math Tools is an algebraic environment within Open Music Visual Programming Language, which helps uh, the work of computational music theorists, analysts, and composers. Here is just a few enumeration of uh, general problems. Uh, if you 
if you are interested in classification and enumeration of musical structure. The set theory is one paradigm. Uh, so all possible catalogs of chords, scales, motifs, rhythms. This goes back, goes back to Edmond Coster in, uh, in French. Zalewski in Pol the Polish uh, music theory. Anna Tuviru is a Romanian music theorist. Uh, Alan Forte, Carter, Morris, Mazzola, Estrada. I will show you. Uh, these catalogs are, you can easily formalize in a algebraic way. Uh, they are really coherent. Then there are tools for algebra, from combinatorial algebra, uh, from uh, poly enumeration theory, bounce and lemma, discrete field transform. So special tools in mathematics uh, which help formalizing these uh, musical, music theoretical intuitions, these music theoretical ideas. And uh, one subject in which I will present in detail is the rhythm timing canon construction. This is a subject I was working uh, since my math degree in Italy in 1996. Uh, I came across this very interesting musical problem, how to build canons, how to, how to write canons, which are rhythmic canons. You have a rhythm pattern, and you want a timing uh, of space, which means if you have a your rhythmic pattern, you translate the pattern. Process, but the timing condition is that at any time you have one percussionist, let's say there is a, a small ensemble of percussionists playing, one and only one. So there is no silence. Every time you have one event, but only one event. You have no superposition. This is really the way in which Asher uh, filled the space uh, in a graphical way uh, and actually it turns out to be a very difficult mathematical problem. Because there are no necessary execution conditions in order to know if a pattern ties the line by translation or not. Very easy to, uh, to imagine, to understand as a concept, but very difficult to solve uh, mathematically. So this, this has been applied in many propositional problems. I'll show uh, composers some results. Composers who have taken this, this idea, which goes back to Messiaen, and Messiaen Haradi, you find the, the metaphorical use of timing process, although Messiaen had no determinology, so for mathematicians, the, the working today mathematicians, contemporary mathematicians. And then again, Anatole Vieru, Fabien Lévy, Tom Johnson, George Bloch, uh, Jonathan Wilde, uh, McGill, Paolo Lanta, so many composers actually interested by this. Uh, this uh, rhythmic time canon process that you can formalize with group theory, ring factorization, discrete Fourier transform, again, very specialized tool in mathematics. So this is kind of computational music theory. So I'm a computational, basically a music, computational music theorist, a mathematician, so I'm particularly interested in that. But, of course, uh, when you apply these tools for doing music analysis, you are in the field of computational music analysis, and Actually, what uh, Jean showed uh, in his aula uh, is, is what you can obtain when you have locally all these tools and then you reapply in, in an analytical uh, strategy. So, have you visualization of the structure of the process? Uh, so, I, I will explain a little bit uh, why this also provides a new paradigm, I think. Uh, which is transformational music analysis, computational music analysis, which is connected with the Xenaki C theory, which is connected with the old set theory by Alan Forte. But for me, the theory is just an initial idea. Uh, transformational approach is much more general and much more linked with perception. And I think that David Ewing, who is the, the, the kind of, uh, initiator uh, of this new movement, had really uh, interesting ideas about the perception of uh, these structures. In the, in the music analysis. So the, this really enables you to develop a, a cognitive model. And uh, we'll speak about a little bit about that because this is an ongoing project with mathematicians and uh, a cognitive scientists. Uh, we, are, we, we are working with. Uh, OK. Uh, so this, this would be uh, some applications uh, in music analysis. And then, of course, in computer aided composition, how to manipulate, you can manipulate these things in order to really use them in composition. So, I was asked by Stefan to do a kind of uh, contraction course 
what I'm doing usually in the master two program, uh, which is a L hour course video. So four session by three hours. But the public was really in the audience, the students, the scientific audience with students from computer science. And this is uh, integrated in the teaching unit uh, uh, MMIN, uh, Mathematical Models in Music Informatics. So it's very technical. And uh, as you can see here, also the objects are, are not so easy uh, to uh, kind of uh, to have an intuition. Uh, I, I put some graphics because maybe that helps a little bit. So there is a, the, the, the timing process here. And you see channels time in the space, which goes uh, actually from a mathematical point of view, uh, which is integrated in the, in the domain of factorization of groups. So this is a CQ group, which is factorized by uh, as subsets, uh, but also with the, with the old idea, uh, I, I don't think I will have the time to, to explain you, that to you, but it goes back to Minkowski conjecture, the old uh, beginning of the century conjecture about timing of the cube systems. And that it happens that this conjecture was solved by a mathematician uh, which, who provide a model which is exactly what we need in order to construct I mean, so it, from a purely mathematical point of view there is very interesting connection between open conjectures and uh, and compositional processes uh, then you have also another uh, so I put in bold uh, the topics that I would like to show you, uh, but are uh, the short list uh, of seven math and musical problems, as I call it that, uh, in that way. So, uh, musical problems, who really, which really uh, can uh, be interesting from a mathematical point of view. Okay? This is a kind of definition. Uh, so, uh, no time to, to explain everything. Uh, here you have, uh, where is the, the Tonnet? That I was really presenting in the case of the, the palestra, huh? I speak at the beginning of this week. I have the impression that I can hear <laughs> since, since I'm one month. <laughs> Actually, it's uh, less than one week. Uh, yeah, and if you're interested, there will be on Tuesday morning a focus on the, our macro problem and explain a little bit the new maquette and the new structure. Which opens really a kind of internationalization of the master, which was basically French at the beginning, but now it's open to, uh, to host uh, students from uh, everywhere in the world. Uh, what is a multi-musical problem? So there's a scheme here that I, I commented, uh, if you remember, in the palestra. The idea is that you have a musical problem and you formalize, you go into math mathematics, so you, you give a statement, and that might be obtain mathematical statements, and you generalize, you have a general theorem, which can be applied in music theory, analysis, composition, and here open music plays a role and modeling. Uh, so you provide models to composers, which take the algorithm, and then they apply, for example, in composition and project, or uh, in music uh, theoretical uh, reflection, so in the music theoretical writings, in order to really understand music theory from a formal point of view. Or music analysis. And then you go back to the original musical problem, and then when you, when you go back, you are a little bit. You are not. It's in the same point you started. But open music can also be used here, can also can be used everywhere. In the music. Okay? So this was the, this was the scheme. And uh, actually, the idea of mathematical problem, mathematical, uh, as, as for me, as the, the kind of interest of. Not being limited to just application of mathematics in the group. Mathematics is so general that you can apply in any field. And uh, of course, uh, as Alain Badiou would say, mathematics is the ontology. And, uh, and uh, so everything we can say about the, the being uh, and state in mathematical terms, uh, providing that we find a mathematical uh, enough uh, kind of uh, uh, flexible mathematical framework. But then the musical results can be of no interest. In this way, I think if you start with a musical problem, you have the chance, you have the kind of, uh, uh, 
at least the final result will, will have the musical frame uh, of the initial problem. So it's musically relevant. And uh, if you're interested in know more about math and music, uh, there will be the math and musical conversation in Singapore. I hope that there will be recorded and available, uh, so co-organized by Gerard and Ellen Chu from Queen Mary University, which is which kind of uh, yeah, is a big moment, uh, I think, a big event uh, in order to put together uh, some mathematicians, computer scientists, uh, uh, people working in performance, uh, in composition. So have, have a look to the website, you will see that there are a lot of topics which I, I also will speak about. So in particular, there is a, an entire session on tiling panels because uh, of the interest in music, but also in, in mathematics. So uh, I prefer math and musical as music math and music mathematics, as suggested by Joyce. There's a passage of news mathematics, uh, which didn't really have an echo uh, in, the, uh, in comparison with math and musical activity, which is commonly used. So uh, let's take, let's stay in the math and musical uh, realm, and maybe something which goes in the direction of the discussion we had. I also am also very interested in trying to put the cognitive aspects into my uh, my, my research. But the way I'm doing is a little bit different from what you find in the cognitive musicology for example, community, where you have a, a kind of a established community working on, on music and cognition. So you have, a, for example, in Europe, you have the European Society for Cognitive Science of Music with the journals, and they have also conferences. Uh, and the problem for me to just stay in this, you see, in the, this is uh, in this part, is that you have a kind of Predeterminate cognitive model. So the typical example is, is the Levin jacket of uh, alternative theory of cognition, where you you have this model of cognition of, of uh, kind of hierarchical uh, hierarchical model of perception and cognition, and then you develop a theory based on that, which is a theory which works very well for tonal music. But the, all attempts to <laughs> generalize in a tonal framework they show that they, they cannot work. So I'm interested in using the field of relationship between math and cognition in order to reach a computational model which have a cognitive and a perceptive uh, relevance. So for example, there is a, I will speak a little bit about that because this is the, the I find one of the most interesting models of, uh, of uh, complex systems. Dynamical systems, which is a, uh, Andrea Resman um, memory evolutive system models, and this uh, is a model of dynamic system in which you use category theory, which is the most more general, the kind of generalized version of algebraic theory. So groups are just special case of categories, and uh, and actually this this is uh, has been used in order to formalize neurons. So you have a categorical formalization of neurons that uh, the, the mathematicians are now uh, try to really test in the experiment in experimental uh, neuroscience. And uh, but you see, uh, we are not supposing anything about the cognition of the perception. We are just using the powerful tool of mathematics, of abstract mathematics. But then we hope that this goes back to kind of musically perceptual, relevant musical conclusions when we apply this to, in order to do a, a theory, uh, which, is, uh, which, uh, which has to do with music analysis and music, uh, music cognition. So this is to tell you that I am, I'm also very concerned about, about uh, the, the cognitive aspects. Maybe I can give you, before entering in the, in the math tools environment, I can give you just uh, an example, a concrete example, of, because this go back, goes back to the discussion we had about uh, codes and about uh, uh, how to do it when you have a non tonal piece, for example, and you want to kind of grasp uh, the perception in time, but also uh, what happens, what can happen in the human mind when somebody is listening to music. Okay? And I found in, uh, in uh, David Newin essays about on David uh, Stuck number. 
housing. Uh, an interesting, uh, an interesting, uh, let's see, from the table. Maybe I have to just go out over here so we can. Okay. Let's maybe listen to this fabric number, number three. The thousand is very short. I have three performance German Penke, Kontarsk, and Tudor, which are very different, and uh, just 40 seconds. It's a good experience to start with this. So first presentation by Albert Penny. Fantastic. And David Tudor. Not the same piece. Huh? Okay. Three very different interpretations. So, well, what you do if you have a piece like that with no John idiom, with no sketches by the composer explaining how the, pro uh, the compositional process was, was built? I think this also opens up a question we were discussing about the autonomy of the music analyst in uh, with respect to the, the composer. Because uh, I think the idea of David Lewin. Who says, okay, let's take this as a space that we like to study independently of any compositional considerations. We don't know how Stockhausen uh, composed the piece. A little bit like a Gerard example, if you remember what on Ligeti, uh, this model of uh, melody uh, that was done by Gerard and Maximilien, with, uh, who was which was completely different from what. Ligeti had done, and then Ligeti said, okay, uh, I'm not done in this way, but it's interesting. So, how can an analysis be interesting, uh, an analysis of this piece, in a way which, uh, which enters into the so called transformational paradigm, which I will speak a little bit uh, later? But the idea is that, uh, as, you, as you find in the, is the, I think the third chapter of this uh, musical form of transformation, Book which is contains a lot of uh, analytical essays, very interesting essays on Dalla Piccola, Debussy, uh, uh, Stockhausen, uh, Weber. Uh, the idea is that you try to find a spatial configuration, which in this case would be a, a pentacord that you can represent here, and you try to color the score with the transformation of a same star. Transformation of, in this case, of a pentacord. So the pentacord is chosen because of really uh, its analytical interest. And uh, Lewin was not the first. Uh, Jonathan Harvey had already, uh, uh, when he was analyzing this piece, was saying, okay, uh, there is a, this pentacord which plays uh, a very important role in the piece. Why? Because a pentacord is. Is done in this way. The pentacord, which is used, so to take really this first chart of the of the score, has a, tetra, a chromatic tetrachord and one point which is separated. And this chromatic tetrachord is something which is very perceptible, and that the listener can can uh, can be can really uh, perceive. Then the idea is that 
you recover the entire piece by transformation of this pentacle, which are either transposition, which are rotations, as we, as we show in the material environments, or inversions, which are reflections. These are strong hypotheses that we also tested computationally. So we had a, a PhD uh, student who, uh, in Cantan, who took this piece and who tried with all possible cores in order to see if there are other structures which tie the space, which covers completely the space. And actually, there are it's really this tentacle which is, uh, which is uh, so, so important. And then uh, look at what, uh, so have a look at to what he's saying. Uh, rather than asserting a network that follows tentacle relation one at a time, according to uh, the chronology of the piece, I shall assert a network, so a special network, an abstract network, that displays all the pentacle form use and all their potentially functional interrelationship in a very compactly organized bit spatial configuration. So what you obtain is a chart, is a space, is a landscape in which you have your pentacles and you have uh, and you have relationships between these pentacles, which are transformations, uh, uh, transposition or inversion. In a more general framework, you can have other relationships, other transformations. But then the conclusion, the sequence of, the, of events moves within a clearly defined world of possible relationships. And because it's so moving, and, and because yeah, it makes the abstract space of such a world accessible to our sensi sensibilities. That is to say that the story project, projects what one would traditionally call a form. And I found this is really a shift paradigm and, uh, with respect to other perspectives in which, for example, set theoretical perspective, you have a catalog and you try to uh, label of all you what you find according to the catalog. This was, uh, I think, uh, Alan Forte attempts in describing the right of thing by uh, Stravinsky in this way, was clearly showing that there is a big limitation in the segmentation process, in the fact that you are using a catalog which is given, but you, you are not coming back to the perception of what you are uh, segmenting. And so you have a space here, you have potentially uh, relationship, and then what is the listening process? This is a path in this space. So it's a way of finding in uh, this abstract world of possibilities a singular path, uh, something uh, which has a, which, can, which you can uh, actually uh, follow when you are listening in time. Okay? So there are uh, many diagrams showing uh, paths which are, uh, which, are, which are possible in the piece. And, and then, so, and this actually for me, this really opens the question of, of, the, uh, of the duality in the, in the music analysis between an analysis in time, so we, we are speaking about that, and this will be what, uh, what uh, David Newton would call the, the um, uh, transformational progression. Okay? You have a progression of pentacle in time. As, as you can see, we cover with sometimes uh, very kind of uh, ad hoc segmentations, but you have the time here. Here, you have lost the time, you have kind of frozen the time, and then the time, uh, you recover the time by choosing a path. A little bit like uh, there is this uh, nice comparison, which is done by David Newin about the cognitive process. You know, when, when you play a melody, you have children, which, for example, uh, if they have to play, they, they really put the Montessori band uh, one after the other, and they play. The melody like that. Other, uh, on the contrary, the you know, gifted uh, children, they recognize. So, so they, they recognize that there is a repetition. They, so they, they, they do something. Some, they, uh, they do something which is more special as uh, chronological. So this was a uh, Jean Bamberger uh, studies about the Montessori bias, uh, which really resonates with this dialectics between transformational progression in time and special uh, or abstract uh, transformational network uh, which displays courts in, in a space. So <laughs> the, the uh, oh, that rhyme here. So, 
So for him, the question is not if you can hear. Is but the real question, which I kind of also answer a little bit, what we were discussing this morning, is that. Do you hear it or can you hear it? So, as he says, I take the question, can you hear it? Because this was the main objection. Can you hear it? Can you hear this, this pentacle? Uh, as to mean something like this, speaking about really oral attention. So, we are not in the first uh, listening, okay? So, this is really an analytical, but I don't know, so yeah, analytical uh, listening. So it, it, uh, you you need to know the analysis of this. You, are, you need to exercise, to train uh, about these possible relationships. Actually, this is the agenda is providing. So uh, sit on the piano and and really uh, can try to recognize a pentacle with this inversion, a transposition of the inversion with the with the inversion of the transposition, and all these possible. Once you have integrated the, uh, these uh, sonorities, which are really formal, uh, formal uh, relationship, then uh, the question is, can you hear it? Can you uh, focus your oral attention in such a way that you recognize this uh, relationship? And actually, it turns out that, yes, you can. This was uh, what we have done with the Sweden Academies, a uh, joint project. Uh, I was intrigued by this. Can you hear it? Do you hear it? So I really wanted to see if there is a possibility to, to really establish a psychology, uh, experimental psychology test in order to see if this model has to do with this process. So if it can be validated or, or, uh, or confuted. And actually, this is the conclusion, by, which is in, in, a, in a paper by. Uh, a student, uh, a doctoral student in McGill, together with Jonathan Wilde and uh, McAdams, is that uh, uh, they derive a cognitive model of uh, this analytical process. So again, there is no cognitive model which is done, and then you build your theory. You have a theory, and then you build you a cognitive model which uses this uh, tetrachord, uh, they, they call it the singleton tetrachord, Interaction that there is a chromatic pentacle, which is inside of the, this special uh, pentacle with common note uh, uh, preserved percepts, which are so uh, notes which are preserved under transformation. And uh, uh, this is uh, actually so it, it works, but conclusion only for etonine well trained musicians. Okay, so shows that the, the, uh, we, we can really establish a link between a formal model and uh, a perceptual, uh, perception of the listener, but under the hypothesis, the strong hypothesis that the listener is not the, the common listener of the general, uh, generalized, uh, of the generative theory of the music of the lab and Jack and Do you have a name? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, just yeah, very, very good. I, mean, I do remember this, this this conversation between me, and so just just to just to go on a little bit uh, and uh, show you the ramifications of of this idea in the really. Uh, contemporary uh, research on, on formal uh, models of cognition, for example, uh, you end up with diagrams. You end up, for example, here, you see, you have uh, intercourts with, uh, with what we call in, uh, in mathematics uh, uh, commutative squares, uh, in which uh, so an intercourt here has an initial pentacord, where it can here, is transformed and inversed, uh, or you can inverse and then transform, so you can and kind of, uh, there's a commutation on, of operations. Uh, and this, for all possible pentacles, so this is a really intrinsic property of the system. So every diagram beside commutes, uh, 
in the same way as uh, in the town net. If you take the town net and you take a major minor chord, you, you have a nice uh, commutation uh, diagram, a commutative diagram between so major minor chords when you have here, for example, transposition. Or inversions. So uh, let's say F, which is uh, an element of uh, what we, we call, call a diether group, is a dark inversion or transposition, and an element G, which is, remember, in the tonnet you have a parallel uh, leading tone and, uh, and a relative operation. So C major, C, ma C minor, this is a parallel. The terminology is a little bit, uh, it can vary. Right? In, uh, in Europe, we say that. Is a, uh, in the German tradition, for example, it's called in a different way. But let's say the American tradition of parallel C major, C minor, or relative C major, A minor, or leading tone C major, E minor. So these are the three main operators that you can, every time you have a chord, a major or minor chord, you can transform. If you have a major, you can transform into a minor, or vice versa, according to one of these three operators, which preserve two notes. Of a tree and moves one of the smallest uh, possible parts. So again, if you are here, yeah, we say we, we call a row uh, here uh, just a group of all uh, generated by the by the these three operators, and then you have the same diagrams. So this is to show you that you have a formalism here, which is really contained in the analytical process, which has to do with diagrams. Just diagrams in which you have points and arrows. And this is the name, this is a category theory. Category theory does exactly that. And uh, I, was, I was kind of suggesting in one of the round tables uh, that uh, yeah, we maybe should have a look to what has been done in, the, you know, in, in this cognitive, uh, uh, the first attempt of, of uh, studying the creativity. Uh, which was uh, the model of conceptual branding, uh, putting together things. And here you have the, the, the diagram as it, it is, that you can find in the, in the book by Fauconnier and Turner, the way we think, which is, I think, one of the first say really to try to propose a con uh, what, what, what they call a conceptual blending. Which comes from Kessler, actually, back to creation, speaking about uh, um, uh, a little bit this, yeah, same things, but yeah, the, the term concept of blending, uh, it's really something which has been developed uh, by Turner and Fauconnier. And the concept of blending is, you, see, you have inputs and you tend to try to blend it. But these are relational networks. There are no transformations, as you can see. You can add that. So you can at the, the, and here's just the, the kind of bibliography you can find, which, which shows that there is an alternative model of what is, is commonly used by uh, cognitive uh, musicologists, which goes back to really category theory as a uh, cognitive uh, as approach of cognitive de development that you find in Piaget, in the last Piaget, not in the first one of interesting group theory, but in the, in the, in the Piaget of the 90s, where it was interested in morphism and categories, comparing and transforming. So really, the, the, the process of comparing things and transforming is, is to do with morphisms. And morphism is the name of uh, abstract uh, arrows okay, in, a, in a categorical space. Then, uh, then this model that was mentioned by, by Erez Mann, until, uh, until the, the, well, uh, our, our attempt really in, in, uh, in going towards a category theory of creativity. That this is a paper that we, we, we presented in uh, the Mathematical Computation Music Conference. And you see here this, this, uh, this quotation, category theory offers a reconceptualization for cognitive science. Uh, it's maybe a little bit exaggerated, but it's a kind of revolution, Copernican revolution with respect to the traditional framework of, of, uh, of uh, cognitive science. Uh, what I believe is that uh, uh, is that this, this, if this is true, if there is a blending process in uh, cognition, then, then you have to go towards uh, something that, uh, for example, uh, Joseph Gauguin suggested, that 
he, he goes exactly from conceptual branding to structural branding. And in order to use, to formalize structural branding, he needs, needs this kind of uh, diagrams, which, uh, which are uh, what we call in category theory called leads. And this is exactly the model uh, that has been used by, by Erzman uh, in this memory ability uh, categorical uh, model of, uh, of uh, dynamical systems with the first uh, implication in, in cognition, as we see here, means uh, the neurocognitive systems. Okay, so I want to, so if you are interested, uh, you find in my webpage uh, this, this, this paper, uh, which is, I think, a good example of interaction between Togolino Macaulay, the, our father in mathematical music theory, his name is Minnesota, but he wrote this Bible of mathematical music theory, which is the purpose of music. So 3,000 pages of category theory and, and music analysis. And, uh, and so uh, a model developed by Andre Erzman and our attempt in putting together these approaches in order to, to, to go towards a, a category oriented theory of creativity. So I, I wanted to show this just a, just as an answer, a uh, little bit of the discussion we had this morning, that there are actually possibility to really develop uh, uh, interesting, I think, uh, abstract models, which can turn out to be also useful for the analysis of the uh, analytical process. So, okay, now let's let's go back to to some. So after this, this kind of flight and this trip into category theory to some basic stuff, uh, I would like to kind of enter a little bit with you in the, some formalism which are behind this, uh, which are behind this model, actually, this geometrical representation, this circular representation. And uh, I, I would like to really show you how, uh, so this is something I was, I was uh, discussing in the palestra, uh, what we have here, of course, is a musical instrument, but it's also a conceptual space. It's a, it's a space in which you can, you can uh, kind of extract some models, for example, the circular representation, uh, which goes back to Mersenne, as you can see from this, uh, this, uh, this graphic. A circular representation on net, which is, uh, I've already spoken about, but let's focus really in, in, on this uh, circular representation, which is one of the, uh, one of the tools that are really integrated in, in open music that you can, you, can, uh, you can use. And I will show you a little bit how, how to use this representation to formalize uh, commonly used musical structures like uh, modes, gum, riff pattern, uh, special uh, scales like uh, Messiaen limited transposition modes uh, and complex structures like your uh, uh, canons uh, and time rhythmic canons. So th this actually is a very kind of uh, gen general uh, model uh, in which you can you can put uh, uh, kind of pitch based material but also rhythmic material. Uh, uh, and so let, let let's see a little bit uh, how. With the idea of, uh, of the intervallic code, oh, the intervallic. Uh, Stefan, you remember this? <laughs> this graphic this goes back to the article that we wrote together in Muzerja and the French. Uh, it was a, and the first introduction to set theory, I think, in the one, one of the first, let's say, introduction to set theory in the French uh, community at all already. It was, a little bit no, but it tried to. We, we, there was a time when we we were organizing a, a symposium in set theory at the account. So people like John Rand, uh, Alan Forster, they, they came. Uh, and uh, the, in order to prepare the, the symposium, we kind of gave the working musicologists the tools to understand what which set theory about. Because I think uh, yeah, the, the, there was kind of discussion. Is this really useful? Is not useful? So it was the you can find in a, in an article. Is in French, unfortunately, but it wasn't really a French. So 
normal that it was in French. Okay, so the idea is that you are looking to relationships, intervals. So uh, the intervalic structure is something which is uh, very useful because uh, every time you have a uh, uh, chord, so all, all major chords, for example, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, intervalic structures play the roles of invariants. There's an algebraic invariant. Uh, the numbers you to classify all possible structures according to this invariant. Uh, if you change the intervalic structure, of course, you, you, you change the, the kind of relationship you have in the, in the for example, uh, from major to minor, you have uh, the reversion, uh, reverse of the interval structure. Huh? This is something I will show you. Uh, let's stay a little bit more uh, in, on that. It's also used for the intervalic structure to count uh, what the intervals in the order. Okay? So C major chord is a four. We will see later uh, that there is another invariant, which is the intervallic content. This is, has been done in, in the set theory analysis. This helps to classify uh, major and minor chords so with the equivalence relation between major and minor chords, because this is invariant uh, under such uh, such a, a transformation. But it also opens new questions because there are chords. I was well aware about that. Uh, for example, the, the all uh, interval tetrachords, which are containing the same information about intervals, so the same interval content, but who are not the same. You cannot transform one into the other one. And actually, there is a theorem which I, I, I should mention now, uh, just to give you a little bit of flavor of uh, what what is a mathematical mathematical theorem, mathematical theorem, which is maybe the first one, the first in the story is the Babbit Milton Babbit hexachord theorem, which says that uh, if you have six notes in, in, your, in your octave, so let's choose a, whatever you want, you can choose six notes. You look at all intervals, so uh, uh, interval content, which uh, the relationship, the multiplicity of, occur of occurrence of every interval, so how many minor seconds, how many major seconds, how many. A minor third, uh, they are uh, within the chord. So this information is exactly the same as the as the interval content of the complement of your chord. So the, the theorem says that every hexachord and its complement they have the same interval content. Okay. So this is, I think, uh, I will speak a little bit about that. Uh, show you a little bit more this interval content. What, what does it mean? But let's stay in the interval structure because this is a, this is Kind of very uh, maybe the first uh, invariant that you can use when you are interested in classifying things. So the, you see uh, a C major uh, three note chord has uh, inversions like this around that symbol. Okay, okay. So the 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 interval content, the interval uh, structure. Sorry, there are just six permutations. Okay, so. The, Four, three, five, three, four, five, four, etc. Okay, this a so you you permutate C Q. Huh? So if you do the same here, huh, starting from the C major chord, for example, you have all the modes. Just simply by looking at the uh, interval structure and uh, and permutating cyclically, uh, cyclically the elements. So we already saw that uh, if you you know if you are using the one of the, uh, so if you if you're making translations, so transposition you see here, uh, just uh, rotations, or maybe here, okay, uh, uh, of the polygon, which is inscribed in, into the circular representation, or translation in the space. This is the format. Okay, you have your your chord, C major chord. If you want to go to D major chord, either you rotate. The figure here, or you go to translate you know, the triangle in the in the space, and it's something different. If you, of course, if you want to go from a major to a minor chord, there is always a symmetry axis here, which uh, which is a reflection symmetry you know, in this case. Okay, see, so 
this is the P operator, so the lead internal operator. Okay? And, uh, so it's really simple to understand what, what is the, the main uh, statement of set theory uh, analysis is to kind of use these symmetries in order to, to combine. So the, this is the, the first uh, symmetry you can do, so principal axis, and then all the rotations, and you end up with possible symmetries. Uh, for example, this, this symmetry transforming this, this tetrachord into that one is simply the combination of a, of a principal axis, which is this one, and uh, a given transposition. So inversions are symmetries, transposition are rotations, but from a, from a just numerical point of view, inversions are subtraction and uh, transposition are addition. So, and, and you compose these elements in order to, to, have your, to have all your possible relationships between one uh, given chord and the, and the, and the transformed chord by, by symmetry. Uh, why to use that? Because actually, it seems that it would seem that this this uh, axis is kind of artificial. You you don't use that. Composers they don't use this axis huh, in, a, in composition. That's not true. Well, let's take just a few examples. Uh, Schoenberg, when you have, uh, for example, this uh, suite, uh, you you are interested. This is a two voices uh, piece. So you are interested in left hand. From one side, you put in your circular representation, you have a, something like that, then you are interested in the right. Huh? Okay, so okay, let's see what happens. It's exactly this, this strange symmetry axis which appears. And this is called combinatorial in, in uh, Milton Babbitt's uh, terminology. So the way an hexachord combines with itself, with the transformation of itself, in order to fill the chromatic space. You know, this, uh, uh, this goes back to our trope, the trope theory, uh, where uh, one hexachord is uh, combined with itself, with transposition of itself in order to fill the, the chromatic space. This is a way, but there is actually in this in this piece that I showed, there is a double combinatorial reality because you can also take just the, the entire first measure, see what happens. This is a, another hexachord, and then. The second, the second one, and then you have a uh, same symmetry. Okay. This is this is this is not a surprise. Schoenberg, uh, uh, I mean, the twelve tone theory is based on symmetry. So that is what that is kind of more uh, more surprising. Is that even composers like Messiaen, uh, what the valor of the intensity? This the mode. No? It's called the mode because it's based on this. Specific mode. This mode, if you're doing the same, take just the first element and the second element, and you put in your circular representation as here, here, and you see again nice symmetry axis, huh? which uh, which kind of suggests that the, these principles are much more general than just Pelton operations. Okay, there are kind of mental somehow somehow mental mental operations. Uh, maybe it's time to also introduce something which will be useful in the in the following because we can we, we obtain the same and use the same in the rhythmic domain. This is the notion of limited transposition mode, limited transposition part. So again, from, I take from Schoenberg, although the notion appears really in Messiaen, but already in Schoenberg you have you have this uh, this. Uh, Structure, first hexachord, then the second one. And uh, uh, what, what it happens? It happens that all these two, uh, so the both hexachords, they have the property of having a rotation which superposes the hexachord itself. In other words, if you take this hexachord, then you transpose by a triton. Okay, this is invariant, and this is the definition by uh, of, uh, of uh, Messian limited transposition. Okay, again, uh, why I put the intervallic structure because this gives you a very economical uh, algorithm to build all your transposition. 
different limited modes. As you can see, this uh, core has three, one, two, three, one, two. So the intervals factor is redone as a sub periodicity, which is three, the pattern three, one, two, which is repeated twice. And if you add these elements, three plus one plus two, this makes six. This is the the value one to get. So general result, very easy to prove. Every time you have a transposition limited mode, which uh, invariant up the transposition state, the TK, you know, with the value K, then you have a, a corresponding intervallic pattern like this, was, uh, uh, was periodicity is equal to K, okay? and vice versa. So you can start from this, and you have obtained automatically all uh, Messian transposition limited mode. This is very useful when you go into microtransactions, okay? when you have really a lot of calculations. Uh, uh, and uh, for example, we work with, uh, with Alain Bancard, uh, a composer who is uh, very interesting in the, this space. 16th of tone, so uh, the octave divided into 96 parts. And uh, so, and actually, Carlos. Uh, Carlos Sabon developed a uh, kind of notation which is included in open music. But now I, I, I go to open music to show you a little bit these this tools and give you some, uh, some examples. But again, the circular representation is something that you can use here. But also in microtonal, let's say for, uh, the first uh, microtonal well tempered system, then there is a way of generalizing also non. Well, temporal system, you can use the same representation because it's a, the abstract representation. But every time you have an, an octave divided into a, a number of parts, let's say n, you have a, a algebraic structure, which is the cyclic group, which is generated by the transpositions tk, which are prime with n. What, what does it mean? Uh, I showed already in the rest, but I, I can uh, go back to this point. For example, in order to generate our system here, we can either ascending chromatic, uh, chromatic scale, uh, so we can we can use a ascending chromatic scale, descending chromatic scale, four, four, five, one, eleven, five, and seven, which are primes with twelve, so, and this generalizes to every the division of the octave into a, a given number of parts. So you just take the transposition which are primes you know, with, the, with this and you have your cyclic group and then you study the, the, the combinatorial properties. So if you're interested, there is a chapter in the one composer's book that we wrote together with uh, composer Alain Bancard, who actually uh, yeah, uh, uh, is, is an introduction of microtonal systems with this perspective, algebraic uh, approach. And specific problem like find all the Messiaen limited modes in these new systems. Okay, so there are a few modes, so 14 or 15, I think, in 12 uh, system. But if you go in the third tone system, they divide into 18 parts, but you have uh, 69 possibilities. Oh, I here again, I show I show the in intervallic content because uh, you can see five, two, one, one, five, five. 511, 5211, then 5211, okay, repetition of the same pattern. In uh, 24 division of the octave, so quarter tone system, you have 300 and something possibilities, which is just one example. And then in Alan Bankar, you have this number of possibilities. Okay, it's too big to calculate, but this was useful for us to help him put some more constraints. Uh, please, <laughs> otherwise we, you know, we cannot we cannot build this. Uh, okay, maybe maybe I can go in open music. So I, I, we, we can play some microtonal systems, for example, uh, and show you show you first of all what what happens if you if you open open music. So if you open, let's see if it works. This no, I have to. Wrong. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Jean, show you a little bit. Already, 
many advanced functions of optimism. And maybe it's kind of useful to go back to very kind of uh, uh, basic concept like what what is the main space of working space for a music theorist and music analysis analyst when he uses optimism. And this space is the patch. What is patch? The patch. So the patch is a white space where you put objects. Okay? So when you have uh, open music, you have automatically uh, the functions which have been, which are really uh, integrated into music. And you see here, you have a map pool with circular representation, seed, theoretical representation, synactic seed, group theory, with uh, uh, cyclic diahedra fine groups, we we'll see later, sequences, how to deal with the uh, finite different calculus, uh, periodic sequences, and canons, which is a big part in which we develop this timing process in several ways. I will show uh, kind of some, some construction. So here, these are the functions huh? that you can simply call uh, if you want to have a circular representation. You have the class, a tool, you go circle, and you put here. And you have your space, which is your circle. Okay? You can, uh, of course, uh, once you know how it's called, you write. Okay? And you have the, the same object. Okay? So these, uh, how can be used? Uh, we, can, uh, we can open it. Let's put a major code to. So here you can put your numbers you want. Four four seven. Back to something we know. C major chord. You can choose your way of dividing the octave or the space in a number you want. Pass. If you open this, you can do also by maybe changing also your you have all this uh, division which is which are integrated so let's, let's go back to what we know again and let me show you where to find the functions my tools circular representation circle to core you put the information the circle into a core object so you in the core which is associated to this or you go back called circular representation circle to core sequence so you have a uh, you can have many polygons, and you want to see all the chords which are seen. So you use this one, or you have a, a sequence of chords, and you want to put to the circle in order to see all the symmetries. Or circle to read, you can uh, you can uh, see the rhythmic uh, structure, or rhythmic to to circle. Okay, so just to give you give you an example, uh, circle to chord. So this is the the easiest. Yeah? You can. Uh, can have. So you choose uh, the initial point. There is no limitation here. The circular representation doesn't impose you to have a, you know, the zero as a, as a C or the one as a C sharp. You can choose uh, your midi sense here, and then your step, which is the half tone here. And so you see, there is a kind of Independence between uh, circular representation here and how do you want to realize, completely realize in a, as a musical object, starting from C, having the half as a, as a, as a half, and then you put in a, your core object, so a chord, and you connect to evaluate as the genre clearly. Same. And you have your chord, but you can play okay, either a MIDI or let's let's do let's do a micro tonal space so that you see a micro tonal object. So we are in 24, so quarter of tone. And 
how you approximate, you have all these possibilities. And so, say, uh, traditional uh, afton system until Lambang are 16th of chrome, okay? So 96. And every time you have a really denotation which has been uh, integrated according to the discussion with composers. Uh, so here we are working in this space. Okay, we can maybe see as a region melodic pattern. And if we want to play this, we do the microplayer. We use the microplayer. See, so now it's a, it's a max pattern. It's automatically. Okay. You just have to wait to see. For the first time you use then automatic. And uh, see what what it is. It's not working anymore. Uh, the melodic uh, huh? a Corsair, okay. Okay. Uh, I would really like to hear this. Microplayer is here. Okay. Or if you want to hear the chord, you just direct it from the circle. Okay, but this is very practical because uh, what I can do, I can do some inversion. Automatically, some rotations which are transpositions. Let's see if uh, it's working. Okay, transposing it and uh, sorry. Uh, so there is a helper uh, if you want to. I think this. So, okay, there's a helper, huh? H, and you have a, you know, uh, uh, rotation, uh, inversion, just E, complement, that's also very practical. You have a chord, and you want to use all the notes which are not in the chord, okay? And uh, that's all. And, uh, and so we, uh, and so you, for example, I have some some patches that I will put. Um, so uh, what I was saying at the beginning is that when you have a tools, you also have the tutorial, which is, uh, which is kind of old now, but but contains all the patches with kind of information inside of every so canons, uh, circular representation groups. Uh, okay, and you can practice. We hope one day we will write a manual. I don't really better <laughs> because it's not well, not well documented. Let, let's say, but uh, so this is something that you have automatically when you have open music. But you, uh, I kind of changed quite a lot in, in, in the courses. So I adapted some patches, and I systematically try to put online the patches which has been which are used uh, in workshops in open music we, open music workshops that we. Take part of uh, the last one was in McGill for the for the, our conference. So if you go to my web page, for example, you have the PowerPoint presentation, all the patches uh, which has been which are associated to, to the PowerPoint. So it's, it's kind of useful to to have both uh, in order to uh, to explore uh, these these uh, possibilities. So uh, now, so I, and I will do the same here. I will put uh, these patches. Uh, 
for you. Um, the TTL catalog, just to show you, for example, here, this, the kind of things you can obtain when you work a little bit. Uh, you have 16 possibilities for, uh, you see, the traditional SCN limited modes. I think you can see very well that there is a symmetry. Of the Triton transposition. Um, and as I said, you know, with this, just with the idea of intervalic structure, uh, you can build uh, uh, all possible catalogs, the catalog of microtonal uh, structures. So in quarter tone, okay, tab, I go through all possibilities. So every time I have uh, really a Messian limited in generalized case. Okay? This is dark causes. I'm not saying that it's good or not, but we, we, we just provide uh, these tools huh, for if a composer wants to write model music, but in microphone, systems you can do and you can kind of explore the sonorities uh, very easily huh, with this, with this uh, circular object. Uh, up, uh, uh, maybe something, yeah, and just to, to show you another strategy which maybe is interesting because it goes back to also a discussion we had about Xenakis and the role of uh, formal mathematics in respect to, for example, uh, stochastic music. Uh, there is another way of obtaining chords which are symmetry and which goes back to the notion of the defining boules, the chord multiplication. If you have a chord, you multiply the two chords. Chord multiplication is taking a one chord and multiply, transpose, if you want, the chord into degrees the second one. Okay? So, uh, for example, here uh, uh, you are taking the uh, two chords, which are the just the interval, the cycle. One chord and the other one is uh, zero one three. Okay, which are here in dotted line, and you transpose the triton on the degree of the second. You put all together, you remove the duplicates eventually, and then you have a you have a scale which turns to, turns out to be again uh, symmetry okay, with the transposition uh, property transposition. Uh, this is just because you start with something which is very regular, which is the time. And then there's a general result which says that uh, every time you t you make the multiplication between something which is regular, a triton, or a diminish, or augmented, or a one volt on scale, okay? and you multiply this for whatever you want, then of course it wins. Huh? This, this kind of uh, structure with the regularity. Uh, wins upon the, 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 the second one and provides the symmetry you want, okay? And this is also very practical in microtonal systems. But this also is interesting because uh, uh, what does it mean multiply two chords? It means taking, you know, six is, is just the interval structure of the type, you know? and to put in the degree of the of everyone, so of the scale, so zero or one or three. So, if you, if you take uh, the triton, you have 0, 6 well, on 0, then you have 0, 6 on 1, which is 1, 7, and then on 3, which is, uh, can I say, uh, voilà. and what is then, what, what, what's that? The union of the period, periodical structure, this is a C. Right. C in, the, in, uh, in uh, Xenakis formalism, this will, will you could write in this way. As a union of, uh, you see, a, a periodic structure, which is cis index zero, which is the triton, okay, transposed into the degrees one and three, zero, one, three. Okay? So, uh, in open use, we also integrate all, this is a very, very interesting idea about Xenakis to use 
the <laughs> order, total order space of the line, of the real line, the natural line, if you want here, a natural, uh, uh, the Z axis, in order to map in the pitches and to work uh, with a, just a Boolean operation, intersection, complementation, uh, union. So, uh, again, in, uh, in, uh, in open music, you can, you can use these tools and you have, a, for example, Xenakis was saying, I'm very interested in, in, in uh, formalizing all Messian written transposition mode with C operations that you can have, you know, and it's uh, easy. So you have all these beautiful structures just by combining, you see, uh, uh, local, uh, local pattern, uh, local periodic pattern. But then you can, uh, oh, you can have some forgotten, some forgotten tree. Three modes actually, just for the mathematician, we want to be rigorous and put all. Uh, uh, but no, that's the point. You can you can build very complex structures in microtonal spaces or in uh, rhythmic domain because this is apply also to it. There is no when you have the z axis with points, nobody tells you if you want to work with the pitch domain or in. In the, in the rhythmic domain, but you see, uh, starting with something which is every time you have a number here uh, with an index, you have periodic structures. You make the union, you make the complement, you take, uh, uh, take these Boolean operations, and you end up with something which I give you this uh, interval structure in order to show you that there is no periodicity, there is no pattern which is repeated. So this is really, uh, from a perceptual point of view, is a, looks like a stochastic distribution of points. Okay? This is the rhythmic equivalent of the scale, one of the scales which is used by Nomos Alpha, is, uh, by, by Xenakis. And the idea is that uh, although you are using deterministic operations, like uh, just set theoretical uh, union, intersection, and complement, you end up with something which is indeterminate. I found the idea very, very, very intriguing, and and uh, I think this has a lot of consequences. If you think in the formalized music, you have this table of coherence with big categories like indeterminates, determinants, and bipolar, with the uh, kind of uh, pieces which are uh, which are answer example of realization of possible uh, problems. Uh, uh, we spoke about the uh, Herma. Uh, uh, Stefan uh, discussed uh, very well that uh, we, we are in the middle here between indeterminism and indeterminism. We were we work quite a lot on nomos alpha. Uh, we had some computational model. We are completely in the deterministic world, and you have apocalypses, other pieces which are in indeterminism. Hey, but you see, uh, I was kind of stressing. I wanted to stress this this, this aspect that. Uh, sometimes there is a dichotomy between statistical methods, uh, stochastic music, and formal mathematics, rigorous deterministic approaches. You can simulate very easily non-deterministic uh, uh, kind of uh, characters simply by using completely deterministic uh, structure. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So uh, let's go back just to, to our circular representation. Again, the circular representation uh, is something very general. I use here in the, in the well-tempered system, but as I said, uh, and this goes back to a question that was raised uh, by Tatiana. Uh, you remember when you said, oh, why, why you are, uh, how can you play in a grass in an Octavian's case? And actually, if you, if you go in open music, you and you are doing the, the tutorials, and you have, uh, I think, map tools, many examples of uh, see, circle representation codes. It's here. Okay, so I have a circle representation, but I have a non octagonal scale. Because I decided to divide 
my circle in 143 parts and to use the the autotone okay, as a As a step. Okay, so I have a microtona uh, scale which lives in this secret space, but which is not of time. This is exactly one of the scales used used by Xenax in almost all. Uh, it just took the the the, the same process and uh, and I applied. So this just to show that actually we are much more general than simply the well tempered system and the equal tempered system. We are in a conceptual space. Then we can interpret uh, as we want. And I show you in a few seconds the application in the in the rhythmic domain because uh, this is also uh, kind of interesting. Maybe just to finish with the pitch uh, pitch space. There is this idea that I would like to kind of share with you because it comes really from structural mathematics. Uh, if you want to compare structures like chords, for example, you have operation like we said, transposition, inversion, you can add uh, multiplication of points, so this is a, a fine transformation, it's a stretching, you know, which, uh, which also stretch, but at the same time, since we are in the octave, can also be a, a reduction sometimes, so you stretch because you, you multiply the, the elements. This is an affine transformation. Every time you, can, you have this kind of transformations, you have a group. Uh, uh, Cyclic group is the group generated by the transposition. The diagonal group is generated by transposition and inversion. Affine group is the generated by the multiplication. And you see, this is something which is underlying all what we have done. We call that paradigmatic classification or paradigmatic architecture because we have a chord and when we have groups which are acting as a paradigm in really a kind of a very philosophical, uh, technical sense because there are groups, actions of groups. But also a philosophical sense, there are paradigms in the sense of, uh, of uh, Thomas Kuhn. Uh, if you are analyzing uh, a piece which is in the tonal, tonal idiom, will be, it's better to stay in the paradigm of cyclic group. And if you want to switch and to go on with atonal pieces, then you have kind of interest to use uh, symmetry, uh, transposition inversion. If you are in the jazz with the uh, you know, tritone substitution, you are much more in the affine group, which captures. This, uh, this idea. So every time you have a group, you have kind of space in which uh, a paradigm, which is uh, your uh, your kind of uh, uh, to say consistency paradigm in music analysis, huh? or the symmetric space. This is a Julio Estrada texture uh, space of texture they show in the in the in the palestra so the carota huh? with the seventy seven uh, possible uh, equivalent classes. So. What does it mean? It means that you have a lot of possibilities here in, the new, in your piano. But then, so if you're looking for uh, classifying all possible chords, for example, then you have two power uh, uh, possibilities. It's a lot. But then you say, okay, a major chord, a C major chord is the same as a G major chord, it's equivalent. Why? Because there is a transposition. So I, if I take all the equivalence classes up to transposition, I reduce my space into 300 and something orbits, which are equivalent classes. So type of chords. But then I say, okay, in Schumer music, uh, a major chord and a minor chord, they are the same. There is no difference between major and minor. So I need another group. I reduce, and I am in the set theory. Like Carter, Forte, John Rahn. Okay, so you see, I, I re progressively reduced the affine group the fine group contains uh, 48 elements, uh, 12 elements, 24, 48. So the uh, larger space, so the, the catalog is reduced because it, you have more possibility to, to put together things, uh, to, to put together in a equivalence way. So you have these possibilities until it's started, which is 77 possibilities. See, this is the paradigm architecture. And I think it kind of provides you not only a computational tool because uh, with the Marseille uh, lemma, Pauli enumeration theory, you can really calculate the orbits, the actions, so you, you have a procedure to, to calculate the, the things, formulas, if you want, really gives you 
how many ports there are in every every system so it's uh, attributed with the other functions and uh, bin binomial precision this was very interesting for first attempts in my mathematicians to write uh, to apply this tool in, in, okay, in music theory so a lot of publication articles appeared from the 70s on this really enumeration problems uh, until Estrada with the this Carota space which there is no more uh, as you remember maybe from the palestra no more uh, symmetry of the distribution of the codes so the uh, just one element here, uh, six, uh, uh, six uh, intervals, 12, uh, uh, three chords, 15 tetrachords, uh, 12 hexachords, 11 uh, heptachords, and so on. Okay. Uh, uh, but I don't want to stay just in the. Well, okay, just to finish. So, theory is, is a spectacle. Okay. Like this. Is the other group acting, and uh, the analysis which uh, used this paradigm? I think uh, Jean's presentation was pretty clear. You can integrate uh, this. I show you just to 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 let you know that well before open music, there were people like uh, Andre Riot and Marcel Menard who were dreaming of integrating into the uh, kind of score editor, the Morphos Dot, uh, secure representations uh, with the with the, all these uh, interval structures. So you have codes. And you exactly see the symmetries, and this kind of guided us uh, in order to uh, to take the same uh, uh, the same uh, approach and to you know to kind of go until uh, what Jean presented, which is the, the sheet object, uh, where you, you have a general space, and then you, you can put your chords and and see and see what happens. Okay, stop with the pitch domain. Because I, I wanted to show you some some uh, interesting uh, approaches and maybe something which is interesting for somebody of you. This for me was try to understand properties of uh, routine pattern. We are in Brazil. We can uh, enjoy and uh, discuss maybe uh, with you, musicians, uh, if this kind of circular representation is something pertinent or not. In order to understand, for example, why in the in the collection of uh, five uh, onset points for rhythm, which stays in a, in a circle of periodicity sixty. It's really the boss who kind of uh, were developed as, uh, in the same way as uh, in the division of the cave in uh, 12 equal parts. The diatonic space played really a major role uh, in the evolution of music. So the hypothesis is that, uh, of course, you have uh, a lot of uh, musical practices, but at the same time you have geometrical properties. And the boss, as you can see here, is the best way to put five points in a circle of so the well-distributed pentagon, kind of the pentagon who approximates the best, the regular pentagon, is the bossa. As the cinquillo is the, the best pentagon in, in A. Okay. Uh, I, I think I don't need to. Okay. And the complement is the syllable. Uh, surprisingly, all these weeks have the same have the same property from a geometrical point of view. You have five points on in a circular represent uh, in eight division, okay? And you want to put five points in the best way. What is the what does it mean the best way? The most regular way. If you put just a, one after the other, you have something which is very compact here and something not compact at all. Oh, a big a big. Uh, Again, three over eight, seven over twelve. Have you, yeah, I think you recognize what is the same bet. C major, huh? It's the major is the diatonic scale. Okay, you have the symmetry of the D. Okay, which is the uh, which is here. So this is called maximally even in music theoretical literature. And there is all kind of ongoing research on to understand, really to understand the uh, 
what is the meaning of this maximal even set? Uh, because from a, from a phys physical point of view, uh, from a physical point of view or combinatorial point of view, uh, they, are, they are very interesting uh, structures. If you have a, for example, a, a table, Italian table, you want to invite seven people uh, dinner. Um, this is the dinner table from seven people from the right partai and five from the left. This is the best distribution of people in order to uh, maximize the conversation. Okay? And uh, it's really it's a physical property. If you have a, uh, you know, the blue are electro, uh, uh, electric uh, charge with, uh, uh, with uh, positive charge and the yellow they are negative charge. If you have six and six, they just will be uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay? If, if you have seven and five, you have to find a, uh, what is called the easy antiferromagnetic uh, model with the spin plus, plus control minus one, one and a half. And, uh, and actually, it's just the, the, the time space. The time space is the, the more, um, uh, more stable physical system. Okay? When you have a, a seven over, uh, over five. And the same for the Tresillo, Cintillo, uh, Bebe. Bossa, I think uh, this is kind of intriguing, huh? because uh, uh, these are just geometrical properties. But at the same time, the, this pattern has been translated orally, so the, this really opens the. If you are interested, there is a paper on general mathematical physics by colleagues uh, Jack Dalton and Richard Kranz, which really describe this easing model. Physics theory. This is another. Nice application of math, math music, no, physics musical <laughs> research, I would say, in that case. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and uh, this has to do with the distribution of points uh, and, uh, and of uh, uh, the same tools, but so the kind of intervallic uh, uh, presence, multiplicity of intervals. Which can be this can be applied in in pitch domain. They can also be used in the rhythmic domain. And this is uh, the idea of unfolding duration of content of a rhythmic pattern that you can find also in, in David Green, and which gives you actually this was supposed to be for I mentioned because we we mentioned the full service uh, this morning uh, the PhD by Olivier Lartillo. Uh, the article David Green wrote in the seven, in the eighties was the first attempt to formalize full Model of perception of time, time perception, and in which way he says, look at what happens if you have, a, for example, this is the bembe, ta 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 there is nothing. Then I'm here. What I heard? I'm here uh, and I heard one duration, okay, of, of this. Okay? Then I'm here. So every time, I, you see, uh, is, is a vector. So you, you go on in time like this. So if I'm here, what I heard? I heard twice, two, two times, okay, this, uh, this, uh, this duration. And uh, and so on. So every time you can kind of have a kind of evolution, no? uh, an unfolding uh, durational content of the rhythmic pattern. And you see here the mountains, which show you that, uh, for example, there are there are uh, I think here with three and with five there are peaks. So three and five. So fives in particular in seven, okay, they are locally uh, maximum in the in the in the process, and since they are not divided twenty four, this is also something which uh, which uh, which uh, explain you the complexity a little bit of this this, this pattern.
this is this is an article which appeared in uh, in, uh, in a book by Brown. I remember? Uh, uh, I've, ne I've never heard about this. This sounds yeah. great. And, and so actually, we we, integ Sorry. we we integrate in in open music, and uh, I show you something. I, I know you are interested in clapping music uh -huh. because uh, <laughs> Alfonso told us uh, that you are working on that, and maybe okay, maybe you can. You can use these kind of tools. So, what what I've done is to take, for example, uh, well, let's take the auditive properties. This this is something interesting and intriguing. Uh, just listen to to this first. These are kind of and that you find them made uh, uh, as a study by Sima Rom, uh, uh, the ethnomusicologist who kind of try to understand the this use of what is called the uh, amparicarity, auditive property, and then formalized by Marc Chimillier. Uh, and if you're interested, there is a next book which is the natural mathematics. Which really shows that mathematics can be also uh, taken as a paradigm in orally transmitted practices. It has nothing to do with just the writing. Huh? And the proofs are formal mathematics for the Western tradition, but uh, there is mathematics also in, in orally transmitted practices. So I was interested to to study a little deeper uh, to apply uh, this kind of formal model of perception, which goes back really to to Husserl, in order to understand why this is. Uh, it's so kind of difficult for and at least for for me uh, to predict. Uh, it's a pattern which is kind of uh, uh, continuously psychopathic. Uh, and actually, the, the fact is very simple. It's because uh, let's take uh, uh, auditive property here. Okay, so uh, if you are taking the the vectors, uh, remember uh, how it's working. So at the beginning you have zero, then you have uh, well, let, let's see here. I think uh, this, this shows you uh, more than uh, so. I'm, uh, so this is the process. Oh, uh, uh, so at the beginning you have nothing. Then you have a uh, uh, one duration which is heard. Okay. Then so every time you have what you have heard before. Okay. And and you see what happens is that is that this maximum, of course, you have a duration by two, which is uh, most present every time is a maximum. But what uh, what makes uh, what makes really this pattern difficult to to uh, appreciate for our kind of here is that you have. Periodicity by nine, for example, by eleven, which are kind of local maximum. So this eleven, for example, which stays in a place by twenty-four, is really the key to understand the, the, the kind of syncopation that you that you hear. Okay, and the same applies to uh, I, I tried with several written like uh, bossa. Uh, you can study. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a nice tool. Be really explored what happens uh, uh, at the beginning and again. And, uh, <coughs> oh, okay, you can also apply to uh, bury your music. Okay, and you, I don't know if you, if you can see. The mountains which are growing behind you don't see so much but okay this is a really extreme case because you take all the piece and uh, you're looking really to the memory uh, which is built uh, really from the beginning to the to, to the end okay and that's too much as, uh, as we discussed and i think i was saying correctly i mean uh, you, you can put all the information that's too much information okay, you need less information but uh, imagine to apply this model in a window, so and in a moving window, so you you can have a, a 
found a way to yeah. in this uh in this uh graphic view mm. are you dealing uh with the the statistic memory of the 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 intervals the region intervals just uh, i'm just dealing with uh you know him here and uh, and i'm asking okay at every time okay, at every at every event i'm measuring the durations that i heard that i written in my memory okay so i'm here i have nothing and here i have a, a duration by 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 two then i i'm here i have uh, twice two, two times the duration by two and one the duration by four Okay, this is why you have two and one, okay, four. Okay, so you are here all the durations, and uh, somehow you are a cartography of in time of what of the duration that you heard. But, but uh, in a way, it's a, a uh, it's a, a way to 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 uh, grab what is, uh, statistic, statistically occur more. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, And yeah. Then sure. if you if you in the middle of the 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 performance you change the pattern, this graphic will will change uh, significantly. If you change the your rhythmic pattern, yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, because we are. Kind of, uh, um, I think yeah. the, the, this is really kind of uh, uh, field of application is very local. You know, you you are locally interested in one structure for example this rhythmic pattern another rhythmic pattern and uh, and to try to understand why for example uh, auditive uh, property of rhythmic pattern in music is maybe difficult to integrate for us it's also because it has to do with this uh, uh, presence of uh, uh, periodicities which are not uh, dividing you know the Well, I don't know if it is your concern in this um, research, but have you uh, reached a, a response for why for us is difficult and for them maybe it's not? No, I don't know exactly, but I know that uh, for them, actually, what they they are doing, as Mark uh, uh, said, that they are associating. Uh, Clapping with the dance. Okay, so it can be that uh, some patterns that you obtain by you know, this articulation between gestural movement and uh, clapping, uh, for them it's completely natural because it's produced by the movement. And for us, who are not aware of the generating movement, they, they are totally obscure. You see? It, this can be, but uh, I mean, it, this. I just wanted to be a uh, kind of tool uh, I wanted to uh, to show you because it has to do with the interval, where with durations, integrates kind of memory of the durations. And, uh, and so clapping music, for example. Uh, because Alfonso was saying, uh, kind of, uh, Adolfo. Why <laughs> Adolfo was uh, saying uh, we have to understand why this pattern is why he used this pattern because there are a lot of patterns who are, who are not giving the same uh, interesting results when you know the principle of clapping music I think you know you know uh, everybody knows you shift huh, the pattern so you are you you are uh, actually have a, I integrated this uh, so you you have a, a first pattern then you shift huh? so you have a rotation. Uh, this is also a, a very interesting application of this, uh, this graphical model because you, you see what happens when you, you know, this is the two clapping performers in, doing the same in unison, and then the red is it's going on, and the, 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 the green is shifting, so it's forgetting the first. But what does it mean forgetting the first? It means rotation. So you can really uh, Playing clapping music just by looking at the, the polygons. Okay, I think that's uh, and so on until the end. So when you do 
12 times. Uh, yeah. So you go back to the, the unison. Yeah. And it's maximally and to three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, but okay. Pro, uh, I don't know. Can, uh, can be, can be actually. Oh, it would be nice to check, but uh, yeah. So our, our way to check is to calculate the Fourier transform, discrete Fourier transform on the subset, and to see if the modulus that Fourier transform is maximum. Uh, the modulus calculation in uh, equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Value A, if uh, a subset, so if, if the modulus of the uh, discrete Fourier transform calculated in value eight is maximum, if compared in comparison to all other modulus of Fourier transform for uh, other subsets of Cavalier eight, this is the, the definition, the formal definition that we use today of a maximal Okay. So the, it's not difficult to, to calculate, but we're having a kind of uh, different cases because, because you see eight over 12, it's not exactly as five over 12, uh, three over eight, which were prime. Uh, uh, so is, there are very different cases in uh, maximally even sets. When you have a divisor, it's very simple. It's just the regular polygon. Four over 12 is just the square. Three over 12 is just a triangle. But then, in the case, in this case, eight over twelve, kind of, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, okay, so tiny part, tiny comments. How how long would you like to stay for? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think this is a. I, I, I will not enter into, into the technical details of conjectures and polynomial <laughs> the composition, but let's just listen uh, and, uh, and see what, what, what kind of model. This is Haragi no? for soprano and piano, and this is the part of piano, piano in three voice. This is the reduction, the rhythmic. What happens? The grid. Okay. It's a pity that Sylvia is not here because this provides an example of time, uh, the, the, the time in Messiaen, which is always kind of linked to palindromic uh, structures. Like, like in, in this case, you have the durations. Three, five, eight, five, three. Okay. Then another duration, four, three, seven, three, four. So palindromes, which are concatenated, juxtaposed, concatenation of palindromes. And this is the rhythmic pattern. Okay. The, the rhythmic pattern is, uh, is provided by, by putting palindromes one after the other. This is the rhythmic pattern of the voice. And then the canon is obtained by shifting by regular entries the other voices. So it's a, you find in RV, you find this exactly the same in Vizine de la Mer. It did, it simply changed the unit. Okay, the, the unit here is the, the uh, 16th, uh, and here is the, how is called this? Simic River. Huh? It's, 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 yeah. Okay. So, but, uh, and why I'm speaking about time? He's not speaking about time, as I said, but he's saying, uh, The result is that the, the sonorities, they kind of mix together, they oppose together in a very different way, never the same moment, never the same moment, you see? It's like organized chaos. Okay, this is a very beautiful quotation because uh, uh, some Perez was also saying the same about how to organize uh, the, the chaos uh, in a kind of uh, structural way. Uh, so, Happens to be chaotic, but it's very. I think we are exactly in the Xenakis C theory uh, case in which something stochastic is produced by, by complete deterministic operations. Nothing more regular than palindromes and nothing more regular than translating in time. Okay? So this was our starting point. Uh, uh, there is the idea of timing. 
if you want, and he wants to, you know, kind of adopt never at the same time. Actually, it's not true because, the, of course, the moments in which the things together are uh, coming together. Why? Because there is no relationship between the signing process, filling the space, and the using the universal grid. It is what just Messian machine, a bit, bit, a bit esoteric machine, and he wanted this machine to grasp a concept which has nothing to do with, with this, huh? which is really uh, linked to the uh, factorization. So what, 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 what is a tiny? It's something that the composers done in the domain very easy. Huh? When, you, when you take a, uh, this chord and you translate, uh, you transpose three times, you fill your chromatic space, Tetrachord, partition in tetrachord, which partition all the space. And if you do rhythmically, it means that you have a, a so you interpret now this tetrachord as a rhythmic pattern. Second, second voice, third voice. So at the end, at the end, you have a you try the space. This is a tiny, okay? One pattern translating in time. Uh, at any time, you have only one onset, no silence. So you feel completely the space. And the, the tool is very simple. It's actually, uh, is, uh, is what is called a factorization uh, of, uh, of a group. You, you factorize this as a sum of two sub subsets. A is the rhythm, and B is the end. Every time you are able to, to put a direct sum, what does it mean a direct sum? It means that every element of your circle is obtained in a unique way as a sum of one element of A and one element of B. Okay? This is, a, is, a, is the definition, a direct sum. Every time you have this factorization, you have a rhythmic tiny tiny. Okay? In this case, it's very simple. You see the entries of voices are very regular. This is the classical model of canon. But then there are, there are actually, there is a class of possibilities. You have regular entries. You have also something like, uh, as you see here. I don't know if you, if you, if you see, maybe if you don't see anything, but let, let take uh, an example. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let, let's go back. Okay, so there are three main cases. One is your rhythm pattern is irregular, and your entry pattern is irregular. This is the most regular case. Okay, imagine you are doing really, uh, you're playing cheat, 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 and you're, you're entering every four times. Okay, four, four, four. This is uh, well known in mathematics as a decomposition of a city group. Into, uh, into sub subgroups. Okay? This is a seal of composition. Then you have the other case, in which you have a pattern like the red one, which is not regular. Two, 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 two. But then the entries, you see, are regular. Here, the red. Here, the green. Here, the, I don't know what the color. Okay? Then, third case, you have something which is not regular. And you see here, maybe. And the entries are there is no regularity, but this corresponds to what we already know the Amasian limited model. Okay, there is a periodicity in the entry of voice until 1950. The conjecture was that there were no other type of. Factors of canons, if you want to interpret musically, uh, apart from one of these cases. Okay, so actually, the big uh, kind of result is that you can obtain, you can have canons like I show you directly. This one, this is a canon in which you have a rhythmic pattern, and you see the entrance of voice. There is no rotation C. So there is this, this pattern which gives you, it says first voice comes here, second, third, 
for fifth and sixth. So it's a six voice channel in which the voices enter in a way which is not symmetrically under rotation. This is not a Messian limited. And the interesting point, which opened really a research area in mathematics, is that these special canons, which are called Wusa canons, because they come from mathematician Wusa, who is working with uh, Anatol Viru, the Romanian composer, they are rare. They are very rare. You have to go until 72 to obtain this kind of structure. If you are working with a pattern of uh, periodicity 12, 20, 30, 40, 42, whatever you want, until 72, every time you you uh, you end up with something which is periodic in the entrance of voices or in the path. Okay? You have it's like a, to say that limited transposition property enters automatically in all possible canonic process. If you want a tile space, if you want to tile the space until 72. 72 is the first example, the smallest uh, space which you can obtain uh, pieces like that. And if you if you remember what what we were listening very Kind of periodical huh? in this this kind of tiling process was a uh, you can listen to the period uh, because it's very uh, there is a lot of redundancy uh, if you want in, in, the, in the in the code in the in the word which is describing the path and the entrance of voices this is kind of maximal complexity form you can obtain if I just play you the melody imagine that it is C D E I put just a the tonic space in order to see what happens uh, if you have a, so you, you you will have c c c c or d d c d uh, a melody which is created just uh, imagine you are projecting your canon in the kind of one linear so you, you lose completely the canon but uh, if there is periodicity inside you have to hear in the melody okay? if there is a strong periodicity your melody will be a minimal melody in this case, it's not at all the case, as you will see. So this is a, a, a maximum complexity on the melodic pattern which is obtained, which really intrigue, is intriguing for the composer. You cannot predict which note will uh, happen okay? in the in the sequence. Let 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 me listen just on one example. The period for some people start again. Again, we are in the third period of 72. But I, you see, I mean, the maximum complexity. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you say this is, let's say, uh, give a number, uh, a name, uh, A, 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 B, B, A, B. C, C, D, e, C. The word is a, what is called in, in formal grammar uh, terms, is a linear word. So maximal length, there is no superiority. Okay? This, so this to, to tell you that uh, these are very rare canons and very interesting from a musical point of view because when, when we implemented in open music, uh, Many composers were kind of, uh, willing to test, to have uh, the solutions. These patterns are not easy to, to, to write by hand. Right? You have to really uh, to uh, kind of uh, uh, producing algorithms. Actually, it's an open problem to have all possible solutions for a given period, which works. Uh, the, is 72 is it's very clear. We have the entire catalog. But then you go to 104. Uh, 144 uh, and so on and uh, we don't know we, at the moment we don't have an uh, exhaustive idea uh, obtaining all possible solutions so we classified completely the case of 72 I show you maybe here okay, this, is, this is the case of 72 with a Again, in a paradigmatic way, you see, uh, seek a group, take the group, affine group. Why? 
because uh, this is also interesting. Uh, if you have a tiny kernel, you can kind of uh, uh, forget what is happening at the beginning, put at the end. It's a circular, it's a periodic kernel. So never, I mean, it's invariant on the tra translation. These tiny processes, uh, you can translate in time, will be all, always tiny, okay? So you can make the cyclic group active. But then it's also invariant under retrogradation, because if you have uh, something which ties, if you put in the reverse order, it ties again. Okay? So it's invariant under, so you can apply this diagonal group and, and so uh, kind of reducing the number of solutions. I, like you reduce, in the same way you reduce the number of the catalog of codes, you put the same, and this is uh, the affine group. It's not easy to, at all to prove that if you have a pattern which ties, you can stretch it and it will tie, tie again. Imagine you have a root which, uh, which gives you a time canon of uh, three voices, some entries of voices, and you stretch the pattern and then it will, uh, it will uh, tie again with the same entries of voices. This is uh, the deep, deep result in mathematics it's called the fundamental, Hitchman fundamental, which says. But anyway, this is to, to tell you that there are periods which work. 72, 108, 120, 144, etc. We know which are the periods. This is linked to Hayosh groups and Minkowski's conjecture. Then we, we have a catalog for some of these periods. For example, 72. It's, uh, everything is clear. And then we gave these catalogs to composers. And then, and then, uh, and then they start having... You know, uh, Uh, pieces using this uh, this uh, compositional device, so I can maybe uh, just just make you listen to some uh, some results if you want. Because uh, the, the first was uh, the first was Fabien Levy, oh, who was student at the, at the time in the Conservatory of Paris, and uh, he wrote his piece for orchestra coincidence for thirty three musicians using one of these. Called the Vusa Canon, six voice, but in a very interesting way, which is uh, the voices are not onsets like that. The voices are morphological factors, so uh, morphologies uh, like uh, uh, a glissando, uh, uh, so maybe the best is listen. And uh, so you have a, a kind of morphological unit, which is here, the red one. Which is juxtaposed with the, so we, which comes, uh, so enters in the second voice, third voice, fourth, fifth, and sixth voice. Okay. And then this is followed by another morphological unit, by another morphological, and so on. So the result is a morphological tiling canon, uh, uh, which also have, has interesting properties in terms of emergence, because, uh, as you, as you have listened, when you have a, such a, a canonic process, you don't listen to the canon anymore. You listen to the melody which is obtained. Okay? You, uh, our perception fusion everything to project the events and extract the melodies. Which and that's the same happens when you have complex structures. And this is why he was kind of drawing this melodic uh, line, which is no more a melody in traditional terms, which is a more a clang farm melody, you know, melody of timbre. Because I would like to maybe uh, let to listen huh, to the, this uh, passage. So the first use of this account. These are the bars. Descending listen though.
In, in this orchestral piece, which uh, he explored for the first time, is a canonic construction in a new way, also in a morphological way, instead of taking really onsets, uh, interpreting numbers as as uh, onsets. But, I mean, the, the field of possibility is very very big. Uh, Jean Bloc uh, was doing a lot of uh, uh, putting new compositional issue into the model, for example, put a metrical organization. If you have a, a grid like that in which every time you have a, a, an event, you lost completely the metric the structure. So it, it was tried to see which kind of metric you can put in order to have a organized metrically uh, the, the, the form, uh, building self similarity processes. This means you have a canon in six voices, for example, and you want to, uh, you have three performance. So you would Fusion uh, voices, couple of voices, in order to have a canon in three voices. But every voice is a canon in two voices. Okay, so this, this is a self similarity process which applies uh, uh, very well uh, in this uh, timing uh, material. And then how to modulate between uh, metrical modulate between a, a canon from a canon, for example, of, of uh, seventy two and a canon of one hundred forty four. So you have a Carter uh, modulation, metric modulation. Uh, uh, Processes which apply also that that was also interesting, and you can also have a jazz standard like a well you need by Monk uh, put it into a tiny grid. Okay, this was a, uh, some interesting experience. Uh, if you want to know more, there is a chapter in one composer's book They're really describing uh, the use by George Block of this uh, this idea. Uh, other composers like, uh, such as uh, Mauro Lanza were interested in, in using big, big canons, like, uh, like uh, for example, this uh, canon of uh, 14 voices in, uh, I don't know, the, the period, but if you, if to obtain the period, you have to sum all these numbers. So I think it means it's 400, I think, or something. And uh, although there is no inner periodicity in the rhythm pattern of a Guza canon, like for example here, you see there is nothing which is exactly repeated uh, in which uh, in which uh, generate the sequence. You have local periodicities, like for example, you know this pattern, these four element patterns: one, three, twenty-five, twenty-seven, one, three, twenty-five, which is repeated several times. So this is also very interesting. Uh, and of try to find local. Periodicities in order to kind of enable the listener to grasp uh, something of the structure, because otherwise, 
we can re we can easily imagine that with this big periodicity you are completely completely lost. No. So there are these these were new ideas which came from just from the study of the solutions of uh, the planning process. So we we have an algorithm which gives you patterns that you find that in open music uh, if you are interested to to explore this, this is in the in the again not tools, then not tools, then you go to canons, then to Wuza Canon. In Wuza Canon you have really kind of a uh, tutorial guiding you uh, from the beginning to the, the to the solutions of, of the, the pattern you are uh, asking for. With the, all the algorithms, so we, we, we have algorithms, although the, they are not exhausting algorithms producing all possible solutions. They just give some of the solutions, but you you are sure that uh, if you are using uh, if you are interested in uh, in, uh, in uh, canon uh, by uh, for example let's see here tomorrow three hundred ninety two okay if you if you want to tile such a big space, you can do. It. Okay, you 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 choose your period, three hundred ninety-two, and you have the patterns automatically. Every time you evaluate, well, you have uh, solutions here. So you have your one of the possible, not the entire list of possibilities, but at least one solution. Okay, and then you construct a, you construct your canon, and you have a here your rhythmic pattern which is translating in time okay and give a number of time and at the end it fills completely on the space okay so uh, again if you if you want to know more you go through the tutorial of the this object the space which is the canons space and uh, I think I was I will skip all the technical details because uh, there is a reason for which uh, 72 is, is a good number. Okay, but this is, it has to do with the Minkowski conjecture, with higher, higher theorem, uh, higher solution of the, of the conjecture, and with really uh, group, theoretical, uh, group theoretical aspects. And maybe. Uh, Maybe uh, you have questions or uh, commentaries. Uh... Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's too short to give you a really an entire complete overview of, of uh, all possibilities. So I think the best is really to take uh, to take the time and to go through the you know, the Matul's tutorial and to see. Uh, I mean, all these patches, how they how they work, and I'd be very happy to have some feedbacks, possible different views of these uh, tools for composition of music analysis. As a, I mean, uh, I think there are very open options, and very different ways of uh, just wondering. Uh, Maybe okay. Just there is a way of generalizing this canonic. Maybe this is interesting also for other composition I use. Instead of taking the theoretic pattern and just doing canons by translation, you can you can have augmented canons, which which, which means you have your pattern and you stretch. Okay, so there is a group acting is a fine group. And there is this uh, notion of uh, augmented planning times, which has been formalized by Thomas Knoll together with uh, with him, and which is also integrated. So you can have you can have a nice uh, form uh, organizations like like that one, in which you have a uh, your pattern with your per periodic pattern, and then you know all these are extensions of the 
uh, of a given pattern. And uh, this you will find in the, uh, in the here, always in the canons folder, but in the augmented canon folder. And again, there is a way uh, to have to find good solutions because not all patterns, of course, they tie by augmentation, either by translation and, or nor by augmentation. So the algorithm kind of uh, giving you the possibility to find the right patterns and the right stretching factors that you that you need. And then there is a, another class of canons that I will not speak is what we call the cyclotomic canon because it has to do with cyclotomic polynomials and uh, that's maybe for the next uh, aula <laughs> in two years. <laughs> Once you, you will uh, uh, practice uh, with, uh, you know, this, this elementary uh, kind of um, not musical objects, then we, we can go on with cyclotomic polynomials and the composition uh, till the composition, ring the composition. Okay, I think uh, that's uh, all.